I and you got the two things that are on the consent agenda. Just, just the two okay. minutes. Just the minutes. Yep. Good morning. It is eight thirty. Welcome to the Wednesday, January eleventh meeting of the Board of Franklin County Commissioners. Roll call, please. Commissioner Sotomayor? Present. Commissioner Harris? Present. Chair Dickinson? Present. Commissioner Dunn? Present. Vice Chair Wehmeyer? Yes. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Maybe hmm. Do we have any correspondence or organizational business? Oh, ma'am. All right. Any public comments today? Oh, ma'am. All right. For our consent agenda, we only have two items. Um, the Franklin County Commission meeting minutes for January 4th and the reorganization meeting minutes for January 9th of 2023. Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Sotomayor? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Wehmeyer? Yes. Chair Dickinson? Yeah. Our first order of business is to consider for approval a resolution authorizing Franklin County to participate in the Rural Opportunity Zone Student Loan Repayment Program. And Paul Bean, and the FCDC director, is going to share this with us. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Janet has more of the details at this point, but basically this is the uh, ROZ, Rural Opportunity Zone, if you recall, is a program that the state came up with where um, municipalities could offer, uh, uh, participate in a program, a matching program with the state where if we were able to get somebody to move to the county, um, then there's an opportunity for them to have some of their student debt retired. So it's a program that the state put out try to help us attract uh, talented and qualified individuals to the, to the rural communities. And so I think we've got three. We have three participating members right now. We have two that are, are waiting. Um, they're waiting on like their paperwork to be wrapped up and to make sure that there's funds available. Um, Paul might talk about this, but we have to be participating as the county, whether we put any money into the program or not, we have to be participating as the county for anyone else in Franklin County to participate. So City of Ottawa, I believe, has someone one. participating in the program right now that's uh, one of their employees. Um, and I think we've had some other employers inquire about it. I don't yeah. know that we have anyone else participating right now. But anyone else can throw money into the pot for a specific person if they want to. Um, but if there's not money specified and we have money available, then our money would go to to any person who's applied for the program. Right. And I see you guys recommended 7,500. This would be our second year doing this. Is that what we did in 22? Yes. And the idea was a $2,500 match per? It's 1,500. Our, our portion is 1,500 Excellent. per person. Okay. And the state matches that 1,500. So each person only qualifies for three, a max of $3,000. So five, that would be five people, mm -hmm. a max, that mm -hmm. we're willing to sponsor? Yep. So we have three right now and two that are working on their paperwork. So that would be our five. Is it a one-time thing they get, or can they do it? It's three years. Three years. Three years. So they can commitment. get $1,500 a year. Well, 1500 from us, but yeah, so 3000 total. It's a three-year commitment to those individuals. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. And, and to Janice's point, uh, if somebody in, in, in working at city, because uh, the city did it specifically for city employees, if the city... Uh, utilizes it then it goes to that pot before it goes to the county and same thing if a business uh, individual business wants to utilize the program um, then that applicant <coughs> would have to participate through the business before it would come to the county we're kind of we were the we're the umbrella mm -hmm. uh, but it enables uh, everybody in the county to participate at some level if they want to and, it, and it's you know it's drawn a few talented people into our county which is what we need more people 
And so we did $7,500 last year, but we didn't use it all. No. I mean, I think I, I had somebody that was concerned about it, but the whole thing with proximity park is we have to have people. And at this point, that, that's important. That's a pretty minor investment. And well, and it's, you know, get, we, can, we can pull in health professionals, education professionals, you know, all the things, even in the existing <coughs> we have such shortfalls. So it's another nice tool to, tool to pull uh, talented people into our county, which is, as you said, uh, we're definitely short of people for the workforce. What about school districts? Have they, have they been approached? Because that um, seemed like that would be a huge... Yeah, they're, they've been notified and, and certainly are aware of this program. Um, so there's opportunity. You know, I've notified all the superintendents every year and reminded them that this program's out there so they can utilize it. So I don't know if anybody in the school districts, I don't think so, has taken advantage of it, but it's certainly a tool that's available to them. Any other questions or discussion? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have no problem participating in the program and, and that way people have access to the the, the federal program. But, um, uh, you know, when we talked about it last year or, or the last time this came up, I was willing to try it. I, I don't, I guess philosophically, I do have problems giving tax dollars, our tax dollars to pay off folks' sure. student debt. I understand the purpose of it and I don't want to take tools away from you. Um, kind of yeah. explaining what's going through my mind, but... I respect that, yeah. Uh, I don't think... Uh, I, I'm not, not going to be interested in the us, our, our tax dollar, that portion of it. Not uh, to the extent that I wouldn't want us to, you know, be in the program, so if a, a business or somebody does want to participate, they could put their money in there. Um, I don't think uh, it's enough money that it's going to... A professional's probably going to move... Ottawa, Kansas, just because, or Franklin County, because of three thousand um, dollars. Know, I, I fall back to that kind of philosophy. Yeah. You know. If, well, I respect that, Commissioner. And, and if, if there are three commissioners that feel similarly, do we don't have to pledge money? Correct. So, so we, so we have three participating members right now that that money was available when they started the program. So it's my understanding we have to keep funding those three to see them through the program. Um, so we could pledge zero dollars today, and we would just pay for those three that are in the program right now that we're we're funding till their time is done. Um, but still adopt the resolution so that Franklin County as a whole can participate in the program. Or you could lower it down to 4500 you know, and, you know, so it's clear to everyone that we are still funding these three people at that level. I understand. We need to meet our obligation to those people that we've already made. It's, uh, it's two more years for that, those folks. Yeah, mm -hmm. I get that. Well, at, at, at a maximum, two more years, yeah. because they have to have student debt available to pay off. So right. they have they they can't have paid off early or anything like that. Right. right. Sure. Yeah. It's kind of. Yeah. I'll leave it but with well, that. I spoke my piece. So. Well, I know several of you heard from folks that that maybe weren't terribly enamored with this program. So, um, and, and Cole certainly makes a fair point. What what are your thoughts the you know rod and roy and don I, I i know we've dealt with it before and talked about the same issues before but if i feel paul is our liaison between this you know feels that it's a it's a beneficial thing i tend to agree you know with what he's bringing to us and i also agree with what cole's saying to a certain extent but i i feel if he thinks as a professional and what, you know, he's dealing with, and he feels that it's doing some good, uh, I don't have a big problem with it. Okay. Would, would we ever have a, a point where we, we as an employer would be able to, I mean, offer this to some, an employee? You don't see this as if we bring them in. So we are really never benefiting Franklin County. We're only benefiting companies that are choosing not to participate. 
It's my understanding that if we pledge zero dollars, um, but then we have an applicant that comes that we're interested in in getting here, and we could say we're Ross County and we're willing to pledge fifteen hundred dollars for you as an individual, and I believe we can pledge money for a specific person, but not put it in our resolution. So I, I think the answer to that is yes, we could pledge totally money for an individual person, but not- And I understand, I think that's umbrella. a valuable tool when you have it for a purpose. When you need yeah. this professional, they're hard to find, you go out in the world and try and find them and it takes something extra to get them here. I suspect that maybe some of the interest we've seen so far is Oh heck! Did you know that you qualify for this? Like after the fact, that's mm -hmm. not an incentive. That's a reward for a behavior that already happened, yeah. which yeah. is fine. But I, 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 I yeah, I, it, I agree with I think every single thing that has been said in this meeting. What I would say is that, and and the only hiring processes that I am involved in are department heads. Um, and $3,000 is not going to get, that's not going to make or break whether or not a department head comes here. It, it just won't. It might be something that they think, oh, that's great. Like, that, that's a nice added incentive, but it, it's not, it, it's just not going to, when you're talking about the salary ranges that we're talking about for those professional positions. And so I think the real question is, and, and I think of course this would be another tool for Paul, and, and, but the real question is, do you believe that this is a good use of, of county tax dollars? <coughs> yes, we always have the ability to address Ian's question. To, if you wanted to do that for a given employee, absolutely you could with or without this program. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's, and, and I think that's a key point is, is, as Janice said, you, the county could say, we still want to participate in the program, but we're not going to put more money into it. And that enables any business industry municipality that wants to, to participate in the program. It's kind of their call to your, I don't, I don't disagree with you commissioner, um, at all. And I think the other dynamic, and I appreciate your comments, Don, but I think the other dynamics that's changed as I'm sitting here thinking is you also see now a lot of the private sector giving sign-on bonuses, which wasn't happening before, and that's probably a better tool financially uh, than this tool um, as I sit here and kind of listen and think through the conversation, because you do see that for a lot of the healthcare especially, and I really thought this would benefit healthcare and education and they've, I know uh, the healthcare people have, have kicked it around some, uh, and I think the school districts have, but I haven't seen it just go wild, so. So yeah. if we were gonna just continue with the ones that we had, we would amend this motion to say we would approve of it, and then we would change the amount to 4,500 since we had that obligation already. Janet? No, I, I don't know that we would need to say 4,500. I think it's no. just we know that we're on the we hook for that. that. I think we just say that we're continuing to participate <laughs> right. in the program, but we're not pledging any money for calendar year 2023. Mm -hmm. Okay. If that is what the five of you would like to do. Roy, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I always had a little problem with... Uh, uh, public money used to pay off student loans uh, in general. But, uh, also, I think there's other incentives like uh, paying for continuing education or maybe sign-on bonus or something that are specific to meeting yeah. the needs of whatever whatever need you have. So I don't disagree. I don't know. I, th I think we can keep it in place, but maybe limit our expenses our contribution to it or something. Kind of agree with Colt and what Don said too. So. Rod, do you have any thoughts? Uh, I'd go along with the deal, yes. Either way, you know, go ahead and cut it off at 4,500 and keep on going. Well, I think we accomplished in last year's resolution because those individuals or took there. advantage of it were good there. Mm -hmm. So I think this year, the way the motion would need to read is that 
um, a motion to approve uh, authorizing Franklin County to participate mm -hmm. in the Rural Opportunity Zone student loan repayment program um, without pledging any money, if that is what you would like. Somebody want to make a motion to that I'll effect? Make a motion to that extent. Second. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Sotomayor? Yes. Chair Dickinson? Yes. Thank you very much. I appreciate the conversation. Thank you, Paul. All right. Our next order of business uh, is the Franklin Osage County Tower Agreement and Thomas Winter, our Emergency Management Director. Good morning. Good morning. We've been working with Osage County for on this process for over a year now, about a year. A while, yeah. Um, Osage County is getting ready to go on the 800 system, just the same system that we are. Uh, in their build plan, they came up with the idea that they could either put two additional towers in their county, or they could tag onto our towers in our county to provide the same amount of coverage. Um, it's actually a cost savings for them to actually add, only add two repeaters per site and, and get the same amount of coverage. Um, we've got, I kind of looked at it, and this is kind of how we built the system when we first put it all together, right? Uh, we had the towers already in place and stuff like that. If people wanted to add more capacity to those towers, they could put the cap capacity on at their dime, and, and they could get use of that tower. So it's kind of planned how we kind of built the system out to begin with. That's the reason why we didn't put uh, full six packs at all these towers. Um, What's a six pack? A six pack is six repeaters. Right now, there's four repeaters, or like a, four repeaters at each of those tower sites. Um, looking at Wellsville, so it, it won't be any cost to the county taxpayer other than utility costs. And I can tell you that our utility costs at Wellsville is Wellsville is this is basically the same as the others, except for it's got the two extra repeaters. Wellsville runs thirty dollars a month higher in utility costs. So I can tell you about what the cost of utilities is going to be about thirty dollars mm -hmm. higher based on those two repeaters. Um, we'll get full use of that, of those towers, and, and the equipment that's there as well. So they're gonna pay for all the installation, they're gonna pay for the maintenance, and everything that goes in there. The only thing we're gonna do is we'll provide the, the shelter spot. Um, there's no additional, there's gonna be a tower top amplifier that goes on top of our tower, which for loading and purposes and stuff like that shouldn't be a problem. Um, they'll install all that, and, and, and we should be good there. Um, for the layman, why is six repeaters better than four for our first responders? So the six repeaters allows us to have more what they call talk paths. So when they key up the radio and they're able to talk and they're on that tower, uh, the radio traffic goes through. Um, with the four and stuff like that, that, that suffices for Franklin County. We have those towers choked down just for Franklin County units only. So what this will do, this will open up those towers for that. Uh, for instance, the auto, our auto tower site is opened up full, and we average about 200 radios at any point in time in the day. There's 200 radios affiliated to it and over 30 talk groups that are all on that tower. And we get, I think we got like six or seven busy, busy this last year on our, our, little, our little towers, they can't, they can't support that amount, that amount of traffic. So that's why they're going to, the Osage County is going to pay for that, that extra capacity to go on there so that we can open those towers up for them so they can have use of them. You said they're paying for maintenance on their loan? Correct. That, that they're adding? Correct. Yeah, I, they, were, they were wanting to do, we kind of went back and forth on things, and they wanted to get, be able to give us the equipment after seven years or whatever it was for their, for their maintenance agreement. And I was, like, I was like, no, you're going to pay for your maintenance for the entirety of it because Franklin County doesn't need it. I can choke down the tower and we're good. So you guys are all, you guys are, this is, if you guys want it, you'll keep it and you'll maintain it. So that was one of those things that we kind of worked on. Anything they have to use the same contractor we do? Yes. Provide, yeah. And it's all, their system's being built by Motorola just same as, as ours, so it's all the people that we know. Yeah, you can yeah. imagine the problem if they weren't though. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to deal with some of these other people that are out there, so. Hey, I, I, I think, and that's part of the reason it took more time, I think this is about as friendly an agreement for Franklin <laughs> County as, as we can put together. We're getting additional capacity, and the, the real cost is roughly $30 a month. They're, they're going to take care of everything else. 
Um, and if we do have a big, you know, multi-jurisdictional event, um, we're now <coughs> going to have the, the full capacity of the towers. So the benefit for us, it gives better coverage so on the peripherals the, than the, if we're driving. So the tower right. top amplifiers that they're going to put on there, there are very few dead spots that we have up in that area, around through that area. Those spots will get even mm -hmm. smaller. So uh, we'll be, as for Franklin County, we're already pretty hot as a county for the radio system and the coverage. Um, this will get even better. I mean, it's almost we're going to glow comparatively. So our spots, again, we're 95% portable coverage from the hip anywhere in the county. So our guys run around with it, and that's outdoor. Um, we're now working on stuff that's actually occurring, being able to talk indoors. And if we chase somebody over the line and it's not picked up by the state system, we're good now. Well, we, we're, yeah. We, we have that continuing coverage going across. How many towers total do we have? Five. And Franklin this, County has five. And this will be, so I know the Wellsville one's already at full capacity. Right. Is this the second one now that it, we have or third? This will be, so Ottawa's was always full. Wellsville is our second one that we filled out. So these two will be the last two. And then Tennessee Terrace is the one, the only one that we don't have filled out. And we had, I had a, we had a plan for that to get filled out as well, but Anderson County just, just couldn't bite off on the going to their 800 system. It's just was a little too rich for them. Give them a year or two. Give them a year or two. They'll be back. They're getting, it's getting to be a more of a donut hole for them. Okay, everybody, all public safety is pretty much going on the system. So they're putting it off, which only ends up costing more money at the in the long run. Any questions about the, the agreement? Okay, an affirmative motion in support of this would read as follows. I make a motion to approve the tower site and <coughs> shelter agreement. Make a motion approved. Second. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Waymire? Yes. Commissioner Sotomayor? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Chair Dickinson? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and our last um, business item is to consider approval of various annual software maintenance renewal invoices. Dustin? Good morning, Commissioners. Yeah. These are what I've been bringing to you at the start of every year for the last several years. Um, got a few more bundled into this t um, portion of the year to kind of consolidate <coughs> as much as I can. There is still one uh, fairly significant invoice that will be coming. Um, got it a little bit late to get it included on this, but in this one, we've got our uh, proof point spam filtering. We've got our momentum financial management software. We've got uh, VPN solution for public safety. We've got a uh, prosecutor by Carpell for the attorney's case management. Uh, we've got applicant tracking and onboarding for the HR department. Um, so quite a few different ones in here. Um, with Omentum, that does get split up between the software services or the software support line of the IT budget, the Registered Deeds Tech Fund, and the Treasurer's Office Tech Fund. I've talked with both Jody and uh, Sue about that. As with our software project going on, as we pull solutions off of the Omentum system, we'll be notifying Omentum with 60 days notice. At that point, they will refund or credit uh, the portions of this that we're paying to them. So numbers probably go at the end of the year a little bit higher right now as we start pulling things off uh, for Sue. Uh, we're expecting her solution to go live in the late March, early April timeframe. So once we have a hard date on that, we'll notify Omentum and should be getting half to three quarters of her portion back. Um, with the VPN solution, we host that not only for ourselves, but for Wellsville PD and Ottawa PD and Ottawa Fire. So there's portions of that that's going to be billed back to those agencies as well. So what you have is a total across the board and, and a lot of that will be build back or refunded as we move off of our current software platform and over to our new ones that you approved last year. Hard to keep track of. Who's, who's paying what? And, yeah. And, and w when, who's on people, first? Yeah, when we go to the old or the new and the, all that other, but all right, any questions?
So uh, affirmative motion would be I make a motion to approve the payment of invoices for annual support services for the fiscal year 2023 in the amount of $105,653.83. Need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Stoudemire? Yeah. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Chair Dickinson? Yes. Thank you, Commissioners. Thanks. All right. We'll move on to staff reports. <laughs> yeah, I don't have too much, Ian. I, as you know, we had a FCDC meeting yesterday. Um, executive board meeting. Um, I mean, I've been excited about FCDC, but I'm gonna have a really good, and the officers just turned over, uh, I'm gonna have a really good executive board this year. I'm excited about that. Uh, seems to be a lot of enthusiasm, um, a lot of desire for progress. So uh, yeah, look forward to that. Paul can discuss anything else, but that's, uh, yeah, it was a nice meeting. So that's really all I have. Right. Tom, do you have anything else? <clears throat> been a while. Yeah. Been quiet here so far. Knock on wood. Hang on. Knock on wood. Uh huh. There we go. Um, yeah. Um, I was going to give you a little more insight on the radio system for what our system was. Um, I was actually able to pull numbers that we actually had 11,153 hours of talk time on the radio system and over 1 million PTTs. A PTT is a push to talk. So every time wow. they, they key up that radio, it's a put, considered one. And we're able to track some of those numbers and stuff like that. So we've had over a million on our five towers, a million of those hits. So our system's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uptime is, I think we've had one outage, which was six, about six hours over for the last year. So that's pretty good that our uptime is, is what that is. Um, People kind of flip out a little bit, but we actually have backup systems in place and stuff like that. They just don't like to use it, but nobody likes to use backup systems when bad stuff happens, but it's, it is what it is. Uh, but being up for most part of, of the year, it's pretty good. Um, as far as the department goes, whatnot, we're working on uh, putting some stuff together. I started a recovery team. Uh, that's something that Kansas isn't good at really, and that's one of their focuses this year. And I've kind of put a jump start on that. <coughs> called some people in and invited Paul to a meeting and stuff like that. We kind of got, all got together and talked about what recovery looks like in the event we have a disaster. Um, because after the fire trucks and the everybody in the ambulances and everybody leaves, uh, we still got to put a community back together and that's not going to require fire trucks and police officers. That's going to require uh, businesses and, and building and, and community support and stuff like that. And what does that look like? How do we get those people together and on the same page and moving us in the right direction? So we kind of had our first preliminary meeting on that. I plan on pushing that forward and having a little more discussion and stuff like that and figuring out what, how to plan for that and what it looks like going forward. Um, got a big training schedule that I've started for probably the first quarter of the year. I've got several things that are going to come into the county, which are statewide. Anybody from the state can come in. So we've already got uh, like three or four days of training signed up for that. So people from out of the county will be coming here, staying here to attend training for emergency management step purposes. Um, just a lot of stuff going on, but I want to give you a quick update. I haven't been here quite a while, so. You haven't had an emergency. <coughs> LAPC meeting? Yeah, yeah I've got to get that, get that scheduled here shortly. So you'll probably see an email on that here in the next day or two. So we can get, get that out and <coughs> rolling again. This is my fifth year as a commissioner. The first year we had extensive flooding. Um, three, had we had three years of COVID. My goal as chair is to have no emergency, my, no declarations, no. I'm just my like, goal, my goal, have a good year. I tell everybody all the time, I was like, we train and we work so we can go out and help others. Uh, we want to build and establish those relationships because we want to go out and help them because I don't want them to call them to hear. Yeah, yeah let's do I, I'm willing to go help anybody, but if, if the need arises, we can call people in to help us, but I'd really rather go somewhere else and help them. I agree. So. All right, let's have a good year. Thank you. Yep. Kyle, do you have anything? All right. Janet? I don't have anything. All right. We'll do commissioner comments. Don? Uh, the only thing that, because everything going on, the only thing I've been to is the Wellsville Chamber meeting yesterday. 
they did approve, the uh, they've had a part-time coordinator. They don't have a director. They just have a person that takes care of their website and, the, and all the little things like that and, and represents the chamber, goes to different functions, and Lay has been doing a, been doing a very good job. And uh, the, the board has uh, agreed to go ahead and fund their position till, till July now. Uh, we're trying to get the, the city of Wellsville kind of to go on board with it, but that hasn't got to that point yet. But the lady has proven she's, it's been a real beneficial. Uh, when you have a small chamber like that, that there's somebody people can call, you know, that's contact and, you know, information. And that. So we agreed, yeah, they, 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 to go ahead and find her uh, position to July. And uh, uh, they've been talking about several different fundraisers for the uh, community out there. Uh, Paul, you might mention that the, the business deal coming up in February. He talked about that coming up in Garnett that several counties that are participating in for small businesses. And go ahead and tell them on that one. Sorry, I didn't circle around, Paul. I was going to do that. Okay. Um, what Don's referring to, this is part of the entrepreneurship community program that we're in. We're uh, co-sponsoring with Anderson County, Lynn County, and Coffee County in Network Kansas uh, to have a speaker that uh, comes in through the e-community Network Kansas program. He talks to businesses about how to make your business a destination business. So how do you how do you attract people from a hundred mile radius to your business? And so uh, we've got several of the counties there working together, and we'll have a conference on this and. Uh, February 16th in Garnett at the Dutch County Cafe um, registration. There's two sessions, a morning and an afternoon. You can do uh, the morning for 20 bucks or the whole day for 40, and that includes lunch. Um, if a business um, is interested but money's a barrier on that, uh, they can reach out to me, and we may be able to help them with some of that. Um, so looking forward to doing that. i touch on just a couple other things while I'm here is uh, – as was mentioned, we had an executive board meeting. I'm, I'm real pleased with the board, too. We're, as an organization, taking a really good look at our bylaws, our board structure. We're a very, very big board, and probably don't need to be quite that extensive, and so we're reviewing those uh, aspects to the organization and, and where we can maybe fine-tune some things and, and uh, uh, make the organization as a whole more efficient, uh, top-down. Uh, you'll also start to see now that hopefully uh, we don't have to deal much with COVID dynamic. We'll s start doing what we did just before COVID and we'll start doing industry luncheons and some more socials and try to support networking in that regard um, with our various industries and businesses. The other thing I'll share is one of the goals for FCDC this year is to be a, a much more present uh, in the agricultural community in Franklin County. Um, that's, as you all know, a huge economic part of the county and I feel strongly that FCDC needs to have a role in that that's economic development and that's a world we haven't been in that I feel we strongly should be I'm a small rural farm town kid so I, I get the impact that the ag has on everybody uh, whether you're directly related your business is directly related to ag or not there if you have a good crop year versus a bad year you'll see it in your bottom line no matter where you are um, I was able to invite it and, and join the Franklin County Farm Bureau board meeting last night and started some great discussions there. I've been working with Lisa Franklin and we're working on an event that we'll, we'll host uh, probably in March. It's kind of a uh, strategic retreat. Uh, how, do we, how do we do some things? What, what are we good at? And how can we promote it? Because part of what I'm trying to achieve there is as I recruit uh, industry to Proximity Park, what kind of industry would the ag sector like to see there? Uh, what could they partner with with their product and maybe uh, support them through a new industry? <coughs> so, you know, what's the ripple effect yeah. and how do we, uh, how do we uh, take advantage of that? So I'm excited about uh, the opportunities we have with the ag. That's kind of all I got, unless you have any questions. Did I share? That's why I asked you to come up. I do. <laughs> I wouldn't get through all that. No, that's fine. Thank you. Well, and, and just for perspective, and, and, you know, three of you, I suspect, know this, just thinking back over the FCDC directors we've had, I can't recall any of them um, 
forging relationships with the agricultural community. Um, so I, I'm thrilled with, with Paul's endeavor there and, and, and am happy with the scope. I mean, the scope, Paul has broadened the scope of FCDC enormously. I look at our relationships with Wellsville and Princeton and, and all, any of the small towns that would like to have relationships can have them with FCDC. And now that we're getting into the ag sectors, I, I just, we're, we're really, we're at least offering services to the entire county, and I commend you for that. Thank you. Thank well, you. and the school districts. And, I mean, just, yeah. yeah, yeah I appreciate just it. So much. The other thing, I mentioned this to you the other day, I, I, I should mention too, um, the state came out with base grant round two. Uh, you may recall the city of Ottawa got round one funding for the gas line out to Proximity Park and a new water tower out on the south side. Uh, I know Wellsville submitted on round one. They're going to resubmit on, on round two for infrastructure and would think they would have a good chance. As you know, I've been working with Princeton for about a year now uh, on trying to get some engineering work done and get them ready to go to bid for uh, stormwater issues that they're having. And so um, I'm trying, this as a one-man shop, it's a pretty big undertaking, but on behalf of Princeton, trying to get a base grant uh, submitted for them for uh, two of those areas. Uh, it's about a $200,000 grant request, so I'm kind of hoping if there's some crumbs uh, in Topeka when they get done awarding it and they see that Princeton could use a couple hundred thousand, that maybe we can get that uh, partially funded and start helping them with that. So. That's one of those things where they announced the program on Monday and the deadline's January 30th, so um, it's scurrying to do that, but uh, that's, that's just another thing we're trying to do. So thank you very much. All right, thank you. Rod, do you have anything? I don't have anything today. Cool. Um, I mean, been to a couple meetings since we last met, but nothing rises to a level we need to share here, take all yours time. I um, had two meetings at the same time yesterday, so I did not get to really attend the um, the Ottawa Chamber meeting because I went to the executive committee uh, of FCDC. Um, was was great to be there and to kind of get a feel of what where that committee is going. Um, and then I did attend the um, um, United Way meeting last night. They have a couple of new board members. Um, the pastor at the Faith Lutheran Church and Herman, I forget his last name, um, worked for conservative, anyway, uh, got some guys on the board because it's been a lot of, of ladies, so they're working toward, I think the United Way is one of those organizations that really hurt uh, when COVID hit and kind of the face of, of what they can do and, and where they're going, and so they're, again, trying to see where, where they fit in in this new culture. Um, and they're still doing a lot of good things. There's a lot of good people on there. So it'll be interesting to see where they go this year. Otherwise, uh, two weeks from today, there is a uh, government day at the Capitol, which includes uh, the Kansas Association of Counties and then all the municip municipalities. They have meetings all afternoon. They have uh, a social event in the evening um, to meet with our legislators, so um, I, it's ne it never hurts to get to know the people in Topeka because what they decide makes a difference to counties lots of times. And then I think the day after that is the luncheonette for um, the uh, conservation district has their luncheon, so if you haven't turned yours in. Otherwise, uh, our offices will be closed on Monday for Martin Luther King Day and We'll see you all next week on Wednesday. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. No move. Second. We're adjourned.